This is video number five for unit one of Biology 101. And for this uh, video, let's start talking about uh, organisms and how they are categorized. I didn't mention Corollus Linnaeus, but uh, Corollus Linnaeus is the founder of our present day uh, taxonomic system of binomial nomenclature. And he is worthy of note. I just had a number of other people and I didn't include him, but uh, he named many organisms that we have today. The uh, first uh, term that I have in this list that you see is the term prokaryote. Uh, this is a general term that is used to describe bacteria. Uh, living organisms, one way that they are grouped is bacteria and non-bacteria. And the term prokaryote actually comes from the words that make it up. Uh, prokaryo, uh, pro meaning before, karyo having to do with the nucleus. And so uh, bacteria do not have a true nucleus, uh, unlike the eukaryotes, which generally they do. The, uh, the pro means before a nucleus would have been formed. The eukaryote, the prefix eu means true, so true nucleus. These organisms have a true nucleus, and this would include the higher forms of life, the protists, the fungi, the plants, and the animals. The largest designation in which a living organism can be placed would be a domain. There are three domains, according to most biologists today. There's the domain uh, eukaryote, uh, or the eukaryotes, and then the bacteria are placed in one of two, either the U bacteria or the archaea. And uh, the U bacteria, or most of the bacteria we tend to think about, the archaea uh, would be those that include the hydrogen sulfide loving bacteria, those you find in hot springs and the deep sea vents. Kingdom would be a designation within a domain. Most biologists today uh, would refer to a five or a six kingdom system. I'll introduce uh, the five main kingdoms and uh, maybe talk about the sixth kingdom later on, but uh, in this video, just five kingdoms. Within kingdoms, there are what are called phyla. That'd be plural, phylum is singular. If you're talking about uh, bacteria, they're not called phyla, they're called divisions. And uh, I'm not sure why that is. I talked to a, a bacteriologist who worked with bacteria day in and day out at the animal disease lab before it closed and that person didn't know. But I, I do know that that's one of the ways they're designated. A phylum can be subdivided into classes, and a class can be subdivided into orders. A good example of a class that most people be familiar with would be the class Insecta, and within the class Insecta there are many orders. The largest order in number would be the Coleopterans, those are the beetles. An order can be subdivided into genera, that would be plural, genus would be singular, and a genus can be subdivided into a species. I don't have species down here. I think I introduced the term already to you. But uh, species would be the most specific. In some literature, I don't have it on the screen here, but in some literature, subspecies are recognized. But technically, taxonomists don't universally recognize subspecies. But if you were to study some specific organisms, they would talk about subspecies. With bacteria, they might talk about strains of bacteria. But uh, a good example of subspecies, if you were to study the garter snake here in Illinois, it's a short snake, maybe about three feet in length, about the max. Uh, different populations of garter snakes throughout Illinois. And those who study the garter snake recognize that there are subspecies of garter snake, depending on what part of the Illinois you are uh, considering. Uh, the black rat snake is found across the United States uh, on down into Florida. But if you were to take a black rat snake from Florida and compare it to a black rat snake in Illinois, because of the geological distance and separation, uh, there are they would look very different and most people wouldn't consider them the same species. And people who study the snake would talk about them as being subspecies. I have the term sun here because again the sun is so important to helping to run life directly and indirectly. It is the uh, 
uh, ultimate energy source for living organisms. Uh, plants rely on, and some bacteria and protists rely on the sun to drive photosynthesis, and then those who don't have photosynthesis generally feed on or rely on plants, plant matter, in order to live, directly or indirectly. The kingdoms that I want to introduce, the kingdom Protista, uh, this kingdom would be single-celled organisms, but they have membrane-bound organelles. They are larger and more complex than most bacteria. There would be one exception, but uh, generally they are larger, and you would see a nucleus at least in these cells looking at them through the microscopes. They, um, they vary widely, and it's hard to categorize the, the protists. I've studied several books on protists, and no two books that I've read agree on how to classify the protists. Some are animal-like, some are plant-like, and they generally categorize them further below protista by their locomotion at uh, their mature stage. The kingdom fungi, these would be the yeasts and the molds and the toadstools and mushrooms. Uh, some would place the slime molds in with these. Uh, there are some organisms that uh, sometimes are placed with the protist, sometimes with the fungi. But the fungi are very important in decomposing and producing carbon dioxide as they break down plant matter, organic matter in general. The kingdom plantae, these organisms are photosynthetic and they have um, the carbohydrate cellulose in their cell wall, whereas fungi have cell walls, but they have uh, a sterol component in their cell wall. I believe it's ergosterol. The, uh, the plants are photosynthetic, and um, we'll talk about them in greater detail a little bit later in the semester. Uh, with uh, one chapter devoted to them. I believe it's chapter 31 if you've kept your Biology 101 text. The Animalia, these are the more complex organisms, though the, the least complex, the very simplest animal is considered the sponge, and there are freshwater sponges and saltwater sponges. Most people think of saltwater sponges, but most people use sponges today actually use a synthetic sponge. Those are considered an animal. Most complex of the animals would be uh, humans. And these uh, organisms ingest their food, and they do not have a cell wall. Last of all is Monera, and uh, there are a number of biologists that still recognize the kingdom Monera, but it's placed in one of uh, the domains, uh, the eubacteria. And the Monerans would be the, the bacteria. So when you think of Monerans, just think of the bacteria, and, and generally the ones that cause disease. And uh, they have cell walls. Almost all the bacteria have cell walls, and they have a component called peptidoglycan in their cell wall. There's a lot of variety amongst the bacteria. Several different shapes, and uh, most are non-modal. Some do have a flagellum or flagella in order to move. And that pretty much wraps up the uh, lecture for Unit 1. If you have any questions, be sure and let me know.